Welcome to a demonstration of um, using Power Builder with um, the Agent SVN plugin. The Agent SVN plugin lets you connect Power Builder to the Subversion version control. So the first thing you need to do um, in the, in, to get this process to work is to start the Agent SVN configuration utility. So uh, this is the Agent Integration utility. And if we go down from top to bottom, you'll see that there's some general options on how you can make the plugin work an option to provide an external difference tool, um, some trunk options, how you want to store, how, how you want to handle the trunk inside the re repository, and the location of the repository down the bottom. And, and in this case, you can see that it's pointing to a local HTTP pro protocol repository. You can use other different types of protocols, but in this case, we just use the local HTTP. And we'll apply those changes and basically happy with them. Now we can actually go and look at the repository here in um, Tortoise SVN. If I re refresh that repository, you'll see there's nothing there. Um, can I go to it via a browser? And again, refreshing that repository, there will be nothing there. Okay, so now all we need is a bit of a test project. So here's a little test project, a Power Builder sound project. Now to add that to um, source control, to Subvin, we go click on the, on the workspace and go to the properties section as shown. And from here, we can now select a version control, and we'll select the Agent SVN version control. Now, because this repository has got um, authentication tied into it, it will need a user ID. But for this test, I'm just going to put in some user ID. So it'll basically prompt for authentication. Now, I could go and type in the, the project straight away, and if the project didn't exist, the plugin would then ask, does it want to ask whether or not the project should be added? But another option is to hit, use the, the triple dot button to actually have a look at the the repository. So right here, you can see where the, this is the binding dialog, and it shows the repository location. And I can actually get, uh, once again list the items that are in that repository. And as it shows, yeah, that's a rep empty repository. That listing also gives you an option. It gives you a suggestion as to how your project should be qualified. Um, there's more details on that in the help file, but it's worth noting that um, at the stage. But in this case, I'll, I'll just call it, um, to match the project, I'll call it, um, you know, my project, something like that. It can really be anything you like. And the plugin has found out that they, that project doesn't exist and asks, does, do you want to add it? So yes, in this case, we want to add that project. And, and as I said, it's authenticated, so it now asks for my user ID password. Um, you can actually save the password using the subversion case, cache, but I, I probably wouldn't recommend that. Um, it's much better to uh, not do that. Okay, so it's happy with that, and we can apply those changes. So as, as you can see, it's, it's, it's going to create this project, the My Project Trunk, uh, inside the subversion repository. We can apply those changes. And down the bottom, you can see it's actually gone away and it's done that. And we can check that by going to our Tortoise SVN. And sure enough, there's the My Project trunk. Now, at the moment, there's nothing in that. So um, the check-in inside of Power Builder is a two-stage step. So the next step we have to do is actually um, right-click on the project itself and add that to source control as indicated. And it will ask whether or not uh, how uh, do I want to perform multiple or, 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 or singular ads. In this case, we'll do the, the multiple. So Power Builder is going away to figure out what, what the list of the projects are in the um, inside of the workspace. There are actually quite a few, so it's, it will take a little bit of time. Um, and here we go. Here's the items that it, it wants to add to source control. So we'll just go OK on that. Now at this point, it's going through again. It needs to authenticate. Um, generally, the, the, the user details are held in memory. Um, the reason it's authenticating twice in this case is because the DLL was loaded and unloaded by Powder. So, but generally, uh, for most sessions, you only have to enter once because the DLL only gets loaded once. Um, but now it's happy with the authentication. And now it's often running, adding the files to the Subversion repository. Now we can actually go to the um, Tortoise SVN and look, because as we refresh this, this part of the, we can see it's starting to add files to the subversion repository. 
I'll let it continue. Um, it, it's working its way through files as we speak. You'll notice that the uh, the plus sign is the indication that the file is not in source control. Um, once it's completed, it'll actually change that indicator, that little plus indicator in the top left there, to indicate that the file is now is it's actually in source control. It seems the, the process for Power Builder is a two-step process. It does a, uh, it sort of queries all the files, and then right at the last minute, it, it starts to add them. And you'll see the the um, well, actually, it checks the status. So what it's actually adding the files at this point in time, but because it does it in sort of a bulk load, it, it, you don't get to see much of the the trace feedback down the bottom. But now it's adding. Now it's going back to check the statuses. So it actually adds the files, and then it checks to make sure that they've actually been added. It's also worth noting this this machine isn't the, the fastest, and running the data, running the screen capture also takes has its effect. Okay, and now it's indicated to be a circle to indicate that it's actually now in source control. And once again, we'll go this time. We'll go to the um, the browser, and we'll look at the repository. And sure enough, there's my project, there's the trunk location, and there's all the different files that have been added to the source control. Okay. So once it's in control, you can basically use standard features that the um, Power Builder gives, things like get latest, check out, check in, undo check out, add different items, show the difference. They're basically the, the standard operations. Now, for example, I can show history of, let's pick a file, see the history. And of course, this is the version that we just, so that's the first version. Okay. Now, the other thing is if I check that out, um, because we're using the default settings, the um, agent by default locked the file on checkout. So if I check this file out for edit, and we go back to the repository browser, and we refresh that, straight away you can see that it's been locked by the user one. So I've actually uh, checked that file out, and I've took. Okay, and I can if I undo the checkout. You'll notice the indicator changes from the tick to the circle. And if I go back to my repository and refresh this, you'll see that the lock is also removed again. So if you don't want to use locks, you can turn that feature off. But it's it's quite nice. It, it serializes the uh, access to files. Uh, if uh, if that's required, then that's a, that's possible. So there you have it. Uh, basically, um, we've we've managed to um, attach uh, a Power Builder project to the subversion version. Uh, and we can use it just like any other version control from inside the Power Builder IDE. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, demonstration.